Halloween plush is available in the description now. And also disclaimer. Ah, well, good evening. Laris, Lazos and Lazos, welcome to the click. You smell absolutely astounding today. But not that you should care if someone told you that you didn't smell nice, hmm? Do you sometimes struggle with things such as social anxiety? Do you feel that you care way too much about what other people think? Are you so afraid of failing that sometimes you never even end up trying? Then this video is for you. R slash how to not give a f how to live your life more carefree and not care about the meaningless judgment that people way too often place on you in this day and age. So come with me down this beautiful journey of not giving a frick and we can just not give a frick together and live just a little bit happier because of it. Enjoy. Mwah. One thing you should care about though is getting the plushies. But only if you want to. Don't feel like my judgment uh, uh, makes you not get the plushie. Even though maybe it should. <laughs> Great start to the video. <laughs> Unfollow Instagram models and influencers. Except me. I, okay, except, except me. Start following artists and designers. That's sort of me. I just decide... Th okay, follow me. Uh, your entire outlook on life will change. You will be reminded less of your insecurities. You will be reminded more of what you love about what humans are capable of creating. This is actually really true. There are plenty of studies out there that show that, for example, happiness and self-image issues correlate very heavily with social media use. So limiting social media is a very nice thing to do. One thing that I normally do when I feel a bit burnt out on social media and I feel it starts affecting me negatively is that I remove everything from my phone. It's like Twitter, for example. Like, oh, I only use it for biz when I'm by my workstation working, but I don't have it on my phone because it limits it so nicely because otherwise you're always flickering on your phone and you get that negativity and people arguing or like people that look better than you like all day, every day. And I'm not even typically the demographic that is like super affected by this, uh, statistically speaking at least. But even I noticed that my vision of everything gets super skewed. I remember a few years ago, I hit the beach like after, after COVID and stuff. And I went to the beach and I was like, Damn, people don't look like they do during Instagram because I had been like chronically online for a year straight during the pandemic and I just completely lost touch with what reality actually looks like. And even I was affected by that. And by that time, I was like a 30-year-old dude. So it happens to everyone and you might not realize it at first, but you need to touch grass sometimes because just factually knowing something and emotionally feeling something is very different. Two ways to look at life. Number one, no one gives a shit. Number two, nobody gives a shit. Whoa! This line of thought helped a lot with social anxiety. When you realize no one gives a frick about what awkward shite you might do because they're focusing on their own shite, it helps. This is actually a fun piece of training if you're like in, for example, exposure therapy and those kind of things for certain anxieties and social stuff. One part of it is to like challenge what kind of like defensive behaviors you have to deal with anxiety. And sometimes it's like random crap. It's like, oh, I feel locked in or like, you know, trapped when I'm in the social situation, whatever. So do something random. It's like, ah, I'm just going to get up and walk around or do something semi weird. No one cares. No one cares. And that epiphany can help a lot. Like it is a lot of work depending on like the severity of anxiety and that sort of thing. But this sort of behavior is actually helpful when you do it on repeat. It's it's a surprising psychological thing. Lottery winner arrested for dumping $200,000 of manure on ex bosses lawn. <laughs> Look how happy he is. He doesn't regret this one bit. Best 200k I ever spent, baby. You know, they say winning on lottery and you burn it all on gambling and drugs or whatever. Look at this guy. He made the right choice. Oh, yes, indeed. You have $86,400 in your account and someone stole $10 from you. Would you be upset and throw all of the $86,390 away in hopes of getting back at the person that took your $10? Or move on and live? right? You move on and live. See, we have 86,400 seconds in every day. So do not let someone's negative 10 seconds ruin the rest of the 86,390. Don't sweat the small stuff. Life is bigger than that. I was provided a very similar piece of wisdom back when I was in uni, which I thought was very valuable. I was having a bit of a tough time. I, I botched a couple of a couple of exams. I was going through like a breakup or something. Life was a bit like, eh. And then I had this piece of wisdom given to me that like write a list of everything that's going well in your life and everything you're happy with, and then write a list of everything that's not going well. And what you realize, typically speaking, is that you have a decent amount of stuff going for you. Like maybe you have family that you love and care about. You have your friends 
Do you have hobbies? Maybe you enjoyed the new video game you got. Maybe you have a started a new hobby or something. And then the stuff that is negative is usually, at least, a minority of stuff that is going on in your life. That can help you, like, uh, zoom out a bit. It's not always the case. Sometimes stuff is very overwhelming in life, and that is also okay. But it can help you put stuff into perspective. Draw stick figures, sing off-key, write bad poems, sew ugly clothes, run slowly, flirt clumsily, play video games on easy. You do not need to be good at something to enjoy the act. Talent is overrated. Do things you like doing. It's okay to suck. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, we're not gonna care how good we were at the video game or not, like 10 years ago. We're gonna care if we had nice memories and doing it with friends and shit. That is what truly matters. Oh, yes, indeed. I sing a lot in the shower, man. Oh my god, yes. I think normally people would have, like, sun chairs or, you know, a little, like, home bar or something in a room like this. No. No, I just have rave lights and I'm gonna dance for the sake of the neighborhood because I don't give a sh**. Oh, that is beautiful. This man is everything that I aspire to be. Me waking up to zero notifications or texts because no one gives a flying f about me. <laughs> yes, indeed, the freedom of existence. People that don't like you, people that don't even know you exist. You see, half these posts are like, oh, you're dealing with social anxiety. Well, no one gives a sh now you're free, baby. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's not, it's not quite that easy. <laughs> R slash thanks, I'm cured. But maybe it's a first step, right? <laughs> Dude, how do you manage to be cool all the time? Because I don't get into arguments with stupid people. I just cut it short and say, you're right. But that's completely irrational and wrong. <laughs> you're right. The underhanded insult as well. I feel this. I feel this. The amount of times in recent years when I have started like writing out a reply to someone on Twitter or in my comments or something that is being very silly. And I'm like patiently explaining what they got wrong about the thing they have such a strong opinion about. And then I just take a step and I realize I don't really care what this person thinks. And the odds that I actually change their minds are like none. I just erase the comment. And then I go outside and I eat grass like a moo moo cow. Because touching grass in your inside is the ultimate touching grass experience. Y'all should try it. My mom said something. You can lie down for people to walk on you and they will still complain that you're not flat enough. Live your life. I think this is beautiful. A compromise happens in life. This can be with work or relationships or what have you. But sometimes in life, it's very important to set boundaries. Because certain people, they are only interested in keeping pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Especially people like bullies, for example, or people that treat you mean or a shitty boss. They will just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. It's important to set the boundary early before they think you're someone they can keep pushing around because uh, they will keep doing so. It is a pattern. 13 years ago, I tried to <clears throat> myself. 12 years ago, I was fired from my job. 11 years ago, I was declared bankrupt. 10 years ago, I picked up a camera. 7 years ago, I was published with National Geographic. 6 years ago, I had won countless awards. 4 years ago, I got a mortgage. Have faith. That is beautiful. That is that is such a beautiful story. Oh my god. I, I hope this thing spreads far and wide. Because it's such a cheesy message, right? It really is that things get better. But when you see an actual example of someone where it actually did get better, it's way more tangible and way more real. During the last round of Trollgate, people said that I should be banned from posting photos of myself because I'm too ugly. So I would just like to commemorate the occasion with these three selfies. Oh, you slay queen! Booyah! That's how you do it! Troll it. People online need hobbies, man. I swear to God. You show him. Oh, yes, indeed. Go off, queen. I think that's the most unironic go off queen I've ever said in my life. <laughs> And it's very well deserved. Keanu Reeves once said, I'm at that stage in life where I stay out of discussions. Even if you say one plus one equals five, you're right. Have fun. <laughs> oh my god, I feel this. I feel this so good. It's so refreshing, especially when you work in like online creation and stuff, because the amount of weird stuff you get thrown your way is astounding. And trying to care about all of it is exhausting, and I don't think it's particularly healthy. So just like looking at it at your screen and be like, yeah, you go off, little one. You can go be wrong in your corner. I'm just gonna do my thing. It's so refreshing. Oh my god, when you get to that attitude, it's like your spirit is free. At least you're chronically online spirit, but you know what I mean. Okay, so oh my god, we have like a- wait a second, wait a second, play that in slow motion in the beginning. We have a balloon baby going up there on the right. Okay, so this is a prank. It's like, oh my god, my baby's gonna fall down. Please, uh, 420 Jesus. 
and he doesn't give a crap. <laughs> I love the hand gestures. Oh my god, just toss it. Like, yeah, that's your snob, boy. Enjoy, enjoy your little puff. That is so good. Look at that. I think Jesus was reincarnated after all. Uh, the churches just don't want to acknowledge who he actually was for real. This is the real reincarnation. I love the hand gestures. This is so beautiful. Oh, bro, my baby's falling down. Oh, no, make a new one, I guess. Here, have a... P <laughs> it's so good. Oh, my God, this is amazing. I want a, I want a movie about this dude, like, unironically. Oh, my God, I'm fangirling. I am embarrassed. When I get back into college, the people I graduated high school gone almost out of college, and I'll only be a sophomore. Went back to college after an eight-year hiatus. The guy I tutored before I left was my professor when I returned. We went for drinks, and he told me how it took him 15 years to get a five-year degree. Visa issues. Just run your race, love. The finish line doesn't have an expiration date. That is so true. We used to have a saying back in uni, because I did engineering, and it was really difficult sometimes to pass the courses. A lot of people dropped out. It was a lot of late nights. Sometimes you were wondering, what the hell am I doing with my life? Is this really the right choice for me? And so on and so forth. And then one day, an alumni told us, and this turned into a bit of a saying in, in, in like our friend group, and he said, this can either be the best seven years of your life or the worst five. And I think that has a lot of wisdom in it. Like, if you try to just make everything in life about being a race, you're only gonna focus on finishing things as fast as possible and competing with whatever you think you're competing with, and you're gonna be miserable. Or you can take the approach that life is a marathon and it's worth living even if you're doing something that is demanding. You can do both, even though sometimes it's a bit of a compromise. We also had this saying that maybe should be taken with a grain of salt, but it was, there are re-exams, but no re-parties. Which, of course, like I said, grain of salt. If you're failing every single exam, it's gonna get suckier later down the road, you know? So, you know, procrastinate appropriately, okay? But everyone fails exams all the time, right? Even I. I think my worst exam, it was like some, some advanced calculus course. Nightmare thing. It took me like five or six tries to pass that damn exam. And it is okay. It happens to everyone. And especially when you're reading higher education's life get in the way or the courses are difficult or what have you, it is okay. You're gonna, you're gonna be in the workforce for 45 years, fam. If you take one and a half years extra, doesn't matter. You know, it's okay. If it takes five years extra, doesn't matter so much either. You're fine. You're fine. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Before you ask why someone hates you, ask yourself why you give a sh**. <laughs> Ah, yes, indeed. Keanu Reeves, black and white inspirational posters. Just what I needed today, baby. I think an expansion of this idea is that realizing when you should care about what people think and what to brush off. Because everything isn't that black and white. Like, not giving a shite about what anyone thinks is probably not great, because humans are social creatures after all. But giving a crap about what everyone says is also not particularly healthy. There is a balance between the two, and that can be a bit uh, difficult to find. Please stop saying you can't joke about anything anymore. You can. You can joke about whatever the frick you like. And some people won't like it, and they will tell you they don't like it. And then it's up to you whether you give a frick or not. And so on. It is a good system. It's just consequence of actions, you know? It's okay. That's how it's always been. Then, of course, there are people in the world that are way too uptight and virtue signal everything you can imagine, but you also don't have to, like, befriend them if you don't want to. It's okay. And then most people land somewhere, you know, in the middle, where they're just normal people. You know, not everyone is, like, an unbearable woke scolder, and not everyone is, like, an unbearable edgelord. Like, 95% of people land somewhere in the middle, where they're just, like, normal people. And that's fine. There is a saying that goes, Those who plant dates do not harvest dates. That's because date palm trees take 80 to 90 90 years to bear the fruits. Do, do they though? Once a young man met an old monk planting dates and asked, why are you planting dates if you know you will not harvest them? Wisely, the old monk replied with a kind smile on his face. My son, go eat a fat dick. The yard is mine and I plant whatever the f I want. As an Iraqi, I am offended that a date palm takes 90 freaking years as it usually takes 10 years. Ah, seems you're still giving a f That's not what this is about. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, professor, I think this is misinformation. What? Why are you giving a f you weak-minded little sling? And so on it goes. Ah, <sighs> gorgeous. My yoga teacher ended class tonight with, You're not afraid of failing. You're afraid of letting other people see you fail. What other people think of you is none of your freaking business. And I feel that shite.
That is kind of true. That is kind of true. How often in life do you feel like you're just worried about failing or something not working out the way you wanted because of how it will be perceived or how does it actually affect you on a personal level? Sometimes stuff can affect you on a personal level, like struggling to find a job, for example, or that sort of thing. But most of the time, I think it's social. We're afraid of looking silly outwards. Like, for example, sometimes I have a lazy Saturday and I just sit in my underpants, marinate in my old sweat and play video games, you know, like Space Man or something, really sweaty gamer stuff. I'm not particularly ashamed of it because I'm just enjoying doing what I'm doing and the next morning I will be showered and look like a functional member of society, or at least pretend to be. But if all my family and friends walked in on me marinating in my sweat playing Space Marine 2, then, uh, then maybe I would be a bit more embarrassed. You see, we are <laughs> social creatures after all. What do you think he's doing Right, so there? all these people have stopped and stared. Uh-huh. We have the Great Tower Bridge of London. Yeah, it looks that nice. That has gone to a standstill and there's nothing on it. Okay. It's been closed off either end. Because of this man, who decided to sunbathe <laughs> Oh my god! He's let down! <laughs> he is sunbathing and loving life right now, and it's completely closed off. We've got police down here, what? who have cornered everything off so no one can get by. Well, Wait, did they close it off there. because of him? He is really loving life. Oh my god, okay, okay. I feel like this is like the beginning of a bit of a scientific field on this channel, right? We have discovered such things as main character syndromes, you know, people who believe they are the center of the universe so they can do whatever they want, get away with anything. But then you have people like this. They're not quite main characters because I don't think they do this because they want to believe they're the main characters. They just don't give a shite to the point that they can disrupt an entire bridge in central London without caring. But it's not because they believe they're the main character, they're just, they're just like disconnected from the universe we live in. It's kind of like a fourth wall break, but instead of being the main character of the movie, you just break into a movie you're not really supposed to be in, right? That's what these people are. Confidence is not they will like me. Confidence is I will be fine if they don't. I mean, depends on context, I suppose. If it's like a petty social situation, yeah, I mean, you'll definitely survive. If it's like, you know, you're being a YouTuber, for example, and your whole brand depends on you being at least somewhat likable. <laughs> yeah, then, then I think it matters. You know, everything has nuance, I suppose. In case you were wondering, me and my husband can see you half naked smoking from that bong through your front window across the street. <laughs> Do I look cool? Yes, this is their Karen-esque way of asking if they can join in. And the answer is, uh, is no, is no, I'm too cool for you, go away. Christopher Walken! <laughs> I used to be able to do a good impression. Walken! If not, quickly people forget that you will stop living to impress people. There we go, nail that impression, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah, people move on quickly, and it makes sense because people have their life to worry about, you know, even after you leave the party. Don't worry so much about what other people think and do what makes you happy, because no one else will probably do that for you. And if they do make you happy, then it's probably up to you to make sure that it's people that you want to have around. Relationships take effort, even if it's people that do care about you deeply. And uh, it's okay to have bad or rough periods, then you sometimes figure out who is really there for you. But uh, happiness doesn't come automatically, sadly. So don't be afraid to seek it out just because someone else has an opinion about it. What a beautiful f***ing day! Nothing beats this shit. Look at that f***ing flower! Shit, it's good to be alive! Oh f Yes! You see, you're my beautiful little, little flower, Mungo. Oh, very tasty. Oh, uh, we got a little kit and dog action. I I'm, I'm betting the kit is the one that's not gonna care. I can oh. tell that much about the plot, that's pretty predictable. No, oh, no, 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 watch out the t- no. Uh, cat! Cat the tail! The t mm. oh, oh, okay. He just... Oh, okay, that's that's a give <laughs> He's like staring down the fire until it goes out. What a champ cat. I can guarantee you that if my chonky lacy cat lit his tail on fire, you can guarantee he would run around the entire house and lit everything on fire. Everyone should have this sort of cool. Man, that is beautiful. This cat is amazing. Can I adopt this cat? It's a beautiful cat. At my daughter's school, it's medieval day. Everyone else wore Disney princess dresses or homemade night costumes. This kid marched to his own drum. Hashtag play, Dr. Respect. Booyah, baby! 
Exam postpone. Hello all. Unfortunately, I have to reschedule the exam and I will have to cancel class on Thursday. Against my best wishes, I have been shot and I'm being treated in the ER. I also have COVID and the divorce is getting messy. Office hours are still 11 to 12 on Monday, Wednesday with your TA. If I am alive, then the exam will be moved to Monday of next week. Keep reviewing the texts and remember to look over your IDs. Best. Class update. Hello all. It seems that my last email went viral on the internet. I appreciate all the replies letting me know. Fortunately, the injury wasn't serious and none of my COVID symptoms are serious. The exam is still Monday and it's asynchronous. Unlike my wife, I expect you not to cheat. Good luck to you all. Best professor. That is so good. That is so beautiful. Oh my god, what a, what an absolute Chad professor. He's like, yeah, anyway, my wife cheated, divorce getting messy, I got shot, COVID. So anyway, exam next Monday. See you there, you little shits. Some poor phoneless fool is probably sitting next to a waterfall somewhere, totally unaware of how angry and scared he's supposed to be. Yeah, sometimes it's good to just disconnect and detox from the online world. Because one thing that algorithms that are so prevalent nowadays don't care about is making you happy. They care about getting your clicks and keeping you on the platform for as long as possible. And if they do that by keeping you outraged or worried, or the fact that you have to keep scrolling because otherwise you're gonna miss out on something important, or you're gonna miss on this thing, and oh my god, I saw this outrageous thing, and now I need to sit and scroll the comments and see so people actually agree with me about how stupid everyone else is, and oh my god, they're ruining everything, and it sucks, and oh Oh my god, why did these then they have succeeded. It doesn't make you happy at all, but it keeps you on the platform. And one thing that I found really refreshing a little while ago, it's like I went down a rabbit hole uh, of drama and stuff, like stuff I was watching on YouTube. And after a little while, I realized like, man, I actually don't care about this. It, it's uh, astounding. It's only like upsetting hearing the stupid things people have done. And to some extent, you know, I keep up with things because I'm on the same platform and, you know, news and that sort of thing. But you don't need to go down the entire rabbit hole because it's only made to really make you upset. And that's how the algorithm works too. So watch things that make you happy and don't let algorithms suck your soul out. How to deal with bullies. You're weird. I sure am. You're a nerd. Totally. Your clothes don't match. Duh. I'm having a party and you're not invited. Thank goodness. That doesn't happen in real life. People keep on tormenting you if you don't stand up to them. I was taught that bullies eventually get bored if you don't react. Frick that advice. They feed off of others reacting at them bullying you. If someone's bullying you, you stand up to them. That's the only way to get them to back off. I think ignoring it works if it's like one-time bullies. Does that make sense? For example, mean comments online, they usually go away very quickly if you just don't engage with it or just block it, you know? But maybe that's not the same as bullying, it's a slightly different category. But the experiences I have had with bullies, at least IRL, is that they went away when they were confronted. All the time, they were just absolute cowards. I remember I had this bully when I was like 15 or something like that. And I wasn't a particularly big dude when I was 15. And him and his friends were always like teasing me whenever they bumped in, they were yelling things across the schoolyard and stuff. And one day I just went up to like the lead boy of the bully group and I just grabbed him by the collar and pushed him up. <laughs> and he started crying and all his friends were so shocked. They were like, oh, what do we do now? And then a teacher came up to us and I thought like, oh, fuck, I'm gonna get into trouble now. And, uh, and the teacher was like, what is going on here? And I said like, they've been bullying me for months. And he said, yeah, Timmy, you're a little aren't you? <laughs> And I didn't even get in trouble because this kid was such a notorious asshole that all the teachers already knew. But then anyway, then, then they stopped bullying because I suppose they were embarrassed when he started crying in the middle of the schoolyard. So bullies, most of the time, are just absolute cowards. And it goes for other bullies too. I've experienced similar things with bullies, for example, in work life that are like teasy and that sort of thing. And they will push your buttons and boundaries and da -da -da. It's not as intense, but socially it can be quite nasty. And they will typically stop when you slap back. Because people like this are looking for easy targets. They aren't looking for people that will actually fight back. So once you show them once that you're actually fighting back, they don't think you're worth the trouble. And hopefully they learn a lesson and they're kind of embarrassed. Bullies suck. Ah, oh, man, Swedish summer at its best. Mmm. Oh, that is beautiful. This reminds me so much of when you're having the first barbecues of the year in Sweden, and it ends up being like 9 degrees Celsius outside, which in freedom units, it's like, it's like cold and wet, okay? That's roughly the temperature, and... <laughs> And you're just like, we're gonna have this barbecue. Anyway, okay, we're really gonna have this barbecue. 
As long as you have a lid, it's fine. I had a barbecue with a few of my uni friends once in the middle of a snowstorm. Because we went to the sauna in the snowstorm, hacked a hole in the ice and bathed in the ice in Swedish winter. And then we were like, damn, we really want a barbecue, but it's literally a snowstorm. So we barbecued anyway in pajamas. I mean, that wasn't perhaps like, you know, the peak of Swedish summer after all. But, you know, close enough. Uh, close enough, baby. If you're feeling worried about how little you have achieved, remember that Bram Stoker didn't write Dracula until he was 50. And Dracula didn't kill anyone until he was dead. <laughs> You're not behind in life. There is no timetable that we all must follow. It's made up. Seven billion people can't do everything in the same order. What's early, what's late, compared to who? Don't beat yourself up for where you are. It's your schedule and everything is right on time. I think the best thing I've heard in reference to this is that it's important to compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. And especially in the online world, it's so easy to always see someone that's doing better at whatever you are focusing on right now. I went to uni with people who were smarter than I was. I was, I was actually quite average in my uni class. If I watch online, for example, people that dabble with music and stuff, most of them are way more talented than I am with singing and guitar playing and stuff. But it's because it's literally their job. They do this like 10 hours a day. But for me, I kind of just dabble on the weekend sometimes. If I look at people that are bodybuilders or, or power lifters, they're like, damn, they're so powerful. Powerful, but it's also like a full-time job. They do this for a living. I go to the gym four times a week. You know, it's it's important to compare yourself to your goals. And when you start caring about your improvement, that's when you get really happy with it. For example, I go to a small gym club nowadays and everyone has their own goals and stuff because people are on different levels. They have different goals. They have different physiques they want to achieve. But everyone is just excited about everyone's individual goals. And no one is pressured to be like, oh, you have to be the strongest in this particular thing. It's like, no, my favorite stuff is to do this thing over here. And it's fine because you're working on your goals and improving yourself gradually. You're not looking to break a world record. And that is perfectly okay. And it's very rewarding when you start like feeling like I'm just competing against myself. And I'm improving towards a goal that is realistic, but also very satisfying to me individually. The subtle art of not giving a frick. Just lay under the chairs on the subway. Oh yes, and then he mastered it. Right away, he read like two pages. He's done. Man, what a genius. What a genius. When you absolutely fucking refuse to give up. Oh, give me the oxygen too, mommy. I'm gonna kick this little boy's ass. That's how you know. He's an absolute fighter champ, man. Oh my god, what a little Chad. Never reply when you're angry. Never make a promise when you're happy. Never make a decision when you're sad. Also, never shop for food when you're hungry. Oh my god, it's the worst. Or like, when you're super full, it's also not good. Shop food when you're like, at a normal level of like, not hungry, but also not super stuffed. Because if you're super stuffed and shopping, it's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna buy two apples and a bottle of water. And if you're super hungry, it's like, ah, oh, 15 throws and pizzas. It's, uh, yeah, your, 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 your energy and your emotions are very dependent on your body. Did you know that two to three glasses of wine per day can reduce your risk of giving a shit? <sighs> Straight out of psychology class, baby. Be brave enough to suck at something new. I think that is so important. I think it's so important because it's so easy to get stuck in comfort things. I think this is a very big trap as well when you start getting older. This is something I felt when I hit my 30s. Oh my lord, I'm getting old and I'm getting comments from people like, Click, you're not old at all because I'm 520. But anyway, uh, this is something that starts happening a lot when you get older as well because you have fewer and fewer things that pull you out of the house by default. You no longer have these like practices after school. You no longer have these you know, after work pubs at uni or at work or like whatever stuff disappears really fast. So it's important to not be afraid to suck at something new. And it is okay. And sometimes it's really fun to suck, you know, right in the end of the sucking phase, I would say it's the most fun. Man, that sounds wild out of context. But the end of the sucking phase, I feel is usually the most fun because that's when you feel like, man, I'm sort of starting to get a hang of this. But there's still so much to explore. Ooh, that is a good face. That is a good face. Today at my bar, one guy made fun of his buddy for drinking a blue Hawaiian. And he goes, I don't give a sh if it's baby blue. This is f***ing delicious. How's that Budweiser taste, you basic ass birch? And then he slammed the rest of it and went, f*** you and your beer, Kyle. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe this isn't like... 
I don't give a frick moment. It's more like a frick you moment, right? But man, I feel this. Man, I feel this. I, if, I, if I'm out of the pub, I'm gonna order what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes that is a beer. On very rare occasion, that's like a whiskey. Sometimes it's a really sugary, colorful pink drink with a little f***ing umbrella. And it is beautiful, because I have nothing to compensate for. Half my living is making plushies, for God's sake. I don't give a sh. Don't ruin a good today by thinking about a bad yesterday. Let it go. Let it go. Frick it all. Don't need a shade anymore. You are here crying in the shower before work. Oh, yes, indeed. Imagine how many showers I could cry in in the entire Milky Way. Mm, oh, yes, indeed. Those, those really hardcore fantasies, man. I sometimes think about that. The scope of everything, right? I sound like a deep 14-year-old, I suppose. But it is freeing in a way when it comes to for example believing in something bigger than yourself if that's spiritual for example or what have you i think you can either feel very lonely and almost abandoned like no one is looking out for you or you can feel it's freeing life is whatever you make of it and i think that's a very valuable insight to come to being lonely in the sense that no one is literally like micromanaging and watching every single thing you do is kind of freeing. And not freeing in the way that you should go around and do bad things. I think most people who are decent and have empathy are not worried about, like, being tormented in an afterlife, and that's why they're decent people. I think most people just like being decent people because we're socially programmed creatures, right? And I think that's an important conclusion to come to, that uh, it's actually quite freeing, that you can do what you want. No one is micromanaging you, and it's up to you to create your purpose. Sometimes people say, what's the meaning of life? And it depends on what you mean. Objectively, I don't think there is a meaning to life. Why would there be? It's, it seems like an odd concept to exist. It's not a natural law, for example. Meaning is something very strange that we have made up with linguistics and like explanations. But subjectively, meaning can absolutely exist, but it also means that it's up to you to decide what the meaning is. And that is a combination of scary and freeing, and it's quite beautiful, even though it can be terrifying. Oh, we got some family hands. Oh, man, hands. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes, indeed. He is coming into this world in a beautiful way. He doesn't give a poo, and neither should he. Welcome to the world, my beautiful bean. None of us are getting out of here alive, so please stop treating yourself like an afterthought. Eat the delicious food, walk in the sunshine, jump in the ocean, say the truth that you're carrying in your heart like a hidden treasure. Be silly, be kind, be weird, there is no time for anything else. Aw, oh, Reevee Weevee, ooh, ooh, that is so beautiful. But yes, indeed. I think there's always a balance to life, right? We're all gonna get older no matter how much you treat your body like a temple, but I suppose also, like, live well because you don't want to suffer unnecessarily later on. I think there's always a balance to these sort of things, right? But at the end of the day, maximize your happiness, right? And that can mean something different for everyone, and that's beautiful. David Issam, the 19-year-old young man that gave absolutely no damn and entered a whites-only pool in Florida, which resulted in officials closing the facility. June 8, 1958, look at the absolute sigma. Oh, hell yeah, baby. Single-handedly getting a whole pool to shut down because officials are so flabbergasted. Oh my god, oh, he was in the pool. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. They didn't have to poo in the pool for them to shut it down. That's how you know it's a power move. Jet fighter pilot on vacation. Ah! <sighs> yeah, that's... <laughs> oh my god. I guess it's similar feelings like what professional singers must feel when people want to do karaoke, right? <laughs> Your fear of looking stupid is holding you back. That is so true. Oh my god, that is so true. This is true, for example, like daring to ask someone out that you like. What is the worst thing that's gonna happen? And I know there are a bunch of memes out there that are like, the worst thing she can say is no. And then you have this meme click that is like, ill. You know, but that, you know, that she, she's gonna forget about it. Everybody's gonna forget about it. And if she says that, she sucks anyway. And it's not worth valuing her opinion in the beginning. So, so don't worry about it. The sphere looking stupid is holding you back. It really is. And if you look stupid to someone like that, does their opinion really matter? No, it does not. The benefit of walking away, number one, makes bad things disappear quickly. Number two, gives everyone optimal view of your back. Number three, answers question. Mm, I wonder what would happen if I just walked away. Let's try it. Oh, I, mi I missed my plushie. I missed my- sorry, man. Let's read more memes, shall we? My dad slipped into the pool on a conference call and kept talking. <laughs> but 
is so smooth. Just doesn't even acknowledge it. Oh my god. That that is when you realize you're an actual main character in a movie. When you spontaneously throw these sort of moves and you're just like, ah, it's just a Monday. You know that you're the main character of the movie. The rest of us, we are honored to be your side pieces. That sounds weird when I, <laughs> when I say it like that, but you know what I mean. Get your mind out of the gutter. Hospitals in Australia have jokes. They rolled in a volleyball to Tom Hanks to keep him company while quarantined. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That is so good. Wilson! Wilson! If you start hearing that screeching from the room, then you know that people have officially gone insane in quarantine. Ah, oh, damn, I stepped in some crap. Someone's opinion of how I should live. That is so true. Oh my god, that is so true. I think the only time I have, like, strong opinions of how someone else should live is if it's actually harming someone else. Or if their opinion of how to live is to, like, spread their very harsh ideology to someone else and limiting how they want to live, you know? No one should really be that upset about how you choose to live if you're not hurting anyone else. Why would you care? The path to inner peace begins with four words. Not my f problem. One thing I have learned while doing YouTube especially, I knew a little bit about this stuff, but it became painfully apparent when I started working with YouTube, is that you will have a constant barrage of people who tell you what you should do. What to support, what things you should do, what things you should talk about, what you should mention, how you should live your life, what example you should set, everything you should be aware about all the time in the entire world because it's something that they saw on Twitter this morning. The thing is that pick the things that you care about. That's the key. If you make a small difference in something that you choose, that is enough. If everyone did that, the world would be so much more beautiful. The human mind isn't made to care about everything in the world all at once, and you sitting and like dying of anxiety in your bedroom isn't gonna help anyone else either. Being pragmatic and making sure you do things that matter is the most important thing that you can do. And one thing I realized the other day is that everyone I've ever had complaining to me about like not doing enough for what whatever it might be is never someone that has actually done as much as you have. Isn't that weird? The only people that complain about this stuff are the people that don't do shit. <laughs> Isn't that wild how that works? Oh my god, he's on the card. Oh, that's so good. He doesn't give a shit. Oh, what a good creature. Oh, that's so good. I think he's just there for free pets. He has realized that this machine is a little bit warm, right, so it's probably nice, and you also get free pets on the way. This cat has hacked existence. This is great. People will always be like, Lamal, they actually blocked me. Yeah, man. I press two buttons to get rid of a weird guy and I'll do it again. Block anyone who gives you even a mildly weird vibe. Who cares? It's not worth the time. And if someone blocks you, who cares? It doesn't matter. Gee, well, they probably weren't that fun to talk to anyway. Just whatever. There are plenty of people in the world. Plenty of fish in the sea to block. Five by five rule. If it's not gonna matter in five years, don't spend more than five minutes being upset about it. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. Most things really don't matter in five years, do they? At least the things we care so much about. My god, like those, like those things that you wake up at three years and be like, Man, I did an embarrassing thing when I was twelve. No one even remembers, man. No one even remembers. Brain? God. Stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. Albert Einstein. Mm, yes, indeed. Especially when it comes to physics. How I sleep, knowing I am a background character in everyone else's lives, and people don't think about me at all. Ah. <sighs> oh, that's actually something I was talking to a friend about the other day. If you could, would you listen to, like, magic recordings of when people talk about you when you're not around? You know, when they talk about you as the background character, like, Oh, did you bump into Click on this party the other week? Oh, yeah, he was weird. You know, would you, would you want to listen to those things? <laughs> hmm. It's a difficult question, isn't it? Or, or maybe some people. Maybe some people are more likely to like me. I, I would listen to it and be like, damn, that feels good. And then on occasion you would listen to someone that thinks you're great and they're just like, nah, he's weird. But I, I hang out with him because of pity. <laughs> That's something for the comment section. Would you? It, it's kind of, mmm, mmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. No one gives a fuck about you, so never be concerned with what they think about you. That's true. Yeah, that, that's true, man. Say goodbye to urgency culture. You don't have to reply to that message now. Your email can wait. You don't have to live with anxiety because of the weird expectations of others. Let yourself be a human instead of forcing yourself to be a machine. Your heart, nervous system, and andral glands will thank you.
adrenal glands. My dyslexia will not thank me, apparently. But that is very true. One of the first steps to, like, self-help and all those cheesy things is usually realizing how much of your life isn't actually an, an emergency. How many things in your life you can just skip doing for a little bit and nothing bad will actually happen. It is quite fascinating. That doesn't mean you should ignore everything in life forever, but realizing that not everything is literally on fire is pretty, pretty refreshing. Do you give a f***? No, no, I don't give a f***. <gasps> no? And do you give a f***? Mm, no, I don't give a f***. Nobody gives a f***. I don't remember these lines from the movie, man. Is this, is this, is this like, a, like a German dub? The best revenge is no revenge. Move on, be happy, find inner peace. Yeah, live and let live is such a beautiful thing to do. I, I honestly wish everyone just adopted that philosophy. Life would be so much easier, man. Behold the fields in which I grow my f Lay thine eyes upon it, and thou shalt see that it is barren. <laughs> well, yes, indeed, my family were f farmers. That sounds different when I say it out loud, but anyway, they were f farmers, and they grow nothing. Amy Schumer tries to prank Kanye West by diving in front of him and pretending to pass out. Kanye reacts by walking away. I also like how they photoshopped this so, like, the pictures blend together. I was really confused when I looked at this first. What kind of prank is this? This is on the tier of, like, TikTok pranks. Oh! <laughs> what, was the, what was the point? Simba. My uncle killed my father and is trying to kill me now. Timon and Pumbaa. Oh, wow. Have you tried just not f***ing worrying about it? And, like, eating juicy bugs? That's nice. Protein is good for your brain. When the KGB tried to blackmail Indonesian President Sukarno with videotapes of him having naughty things with Russian women disguised as flight attendants, he wasn't upset. He was delighted and asked for more copies of the video to show back in his country. <laughs> you don't understand, man. This is a bragging right for me. You, you did me a favor. He got free naughties out of it, and he also got videos that he can brag to his bros. Man, what an absolute power move. This is how you ensure you're never blackmailed. When you buy plants from Costco, that's when you don't care anymore. That's when we let go of our egos and begin our spiritual journey. Everyone in my spiritual cult, we're going to Costco to buy pants. When you're 20 minutes into writing a well-worded argument on Reddit and suddenly remember you don't give a f about any of this. Delete! 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 Man, oh my god, this is exactly what I talked about earlier on in the video. I've had this happen to me a few times, right? Start replying to something, someone being very silly about their opinion about something, and then I realize, you know what, I don't care. Go run off and eat, eat glue or something like that. Have, have fun, boy. No matter how good of a person you are, you are evil in someone's story. Well, it's very nice that this has like a Thanos picture, I, I suppose. <laughs> but it is sort of true. There's always going to be someone that disapproves about what you do. Evil is a very strong word, but you're always going to have people that don't like you. It can be competitors in the workplace. It can be an ex. It could be a friend you had a falling out with. It can be someone that actually was very nasty to you and you just put your boundary down and they convince themselves that, no, you're actually bad for putting down this boundary and you were the one being mean to them and so on and so forth. And sometimes it's purely subjective and no one is actually a bad person, but something about the situation makes you smack into each other. And uh, realizing that not everyone has to like you is, uh, is pretty nice. Just because things could have been different doesn't mean they would be better. Yeah, that's very true. I think that's a very good sentiment for not regretting things. One thing I realized in life is that it's easier to regret things that you never tried instead of things that you did try and didn't necessarily work out. Because if you just try something and it doesn't work out, then you have all the answers, kind of. There's no unknown factors. It's like, oh yeah, this seemed promising. I tried it, didn't work out, but at least I gave it a shot instead of wondering what could have been. And that's something I learned with life as I got older. Usually the things you regret are the stuff you don't do. Sometimes you, of course, can regret things you do. You know, sometimes things can go pretty bad. But typically speaking, when we talk about mundane stuff, you know, like asking out your crush, you know, most of the time you regret not doing it more than doing it and getting a no, at least in the long run. I was raised to treat the janitor with the same respect as the CEO, Tom Hardy. That's how you just come off as a good person, honestly. It's beautiful. Everyone deserves basic respect.
The desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience, and paradoxically, the acceptance of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience. While it does sound like weird and confusing at first, I think it makes perfect sense when you start taking examples out of this. For example, not worrying too much about things you can't do anything about. That is an incredibly freeing thing because it frees up your mind to do things that you can actually affect and create happiness, instead of constantly worrying about things you can't actually affect. And wanting more positive experience, just constantly striving for something more, which if you gradually achieve more and more and more, of course, that can be like a sense of meaningness and happiness, but it shouldn't be what everything depends on, because you can't keep climbing indefinitely and uh, being happy with where you are at. And even if things slow down, for example, if you talk about career-wise or personally or, or, you know, fitness or whatever it might be, that should be fine. And having multiple things in life that you, you're interested in usually helps that sort of thing. Learn to be okay with people not knowing your side of the story. You have nothing to prove to anyone. Thank you, Pinecone. I guess that's a piece of wisdom that is also taken with a grain of salt. <laughs> like... Uh, for example, if you're a YouTuber and people start spreading horrific rumors about you, maybe it's good to care about what people think because, man, that can really mess up your life. <laughs> so, a great assault, I suppose? Is this an overarching opinion that will greatly affect my life and livelihood, or is this just one jerk at the office that I don't really feel like I need to convince to like me? You know? I feel... I feel there is like a, like a gradient to this. I used to walk into a room full of people and wonder if they liked me. Now I look around and wonder if I like them. Ah, yes indeed, it's called being 30 plus, baby. Booyah. Nobody gives a f less than this guy. That is beautiful. Oh my god, what a powerful specimen. You're never too important to be nice to people. Oh, this is this should be the pin post in like r slash Karen subreddits. Oh, 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 please. Please, little, little boo-boo, oh my god. Why you should be gentle with people. Someone's life, what you know about it. Yeah, and that goes for all directions. How many times have you had someone say something insensitive or very presumptuous about you and you're like, ugh, they have no idea what they're talking about. The same is true in every single direction. So being a bit uh, tactful with sort of things is, is a very good idea. I can't afford to hate people. I don't have that kind of time. Bob Ross is so beautiful. I'm subscribed to the Bob Ross channel on Twitch, and I sometimes have it on my second monitor when I'm working. He's such he's such a treasure, man. Oh my god, what a beautiful bean. Cornbread with Cornbread TV, and you kept walking off on us, and we want to know what shoes you got on, and why do you have those shoes on? Uh, okay. I was just waiting for my homie to come out of the <laughs> restaurant. They want to use the restroom. He just doesn't care. I understand that. So why do you have on the shoes that you have on? How much did they cost? Oh, uh, okay. these are Oral Boots. Um... Like 400 more than I wanted to pay, but you know. Oh, that's that's a mood. Yeah, I can relate to that. Okay, so this is like a bunch of TikTok reviewers. They're just trying to egg people on to get like a weird confrontation for content. All the shoes in the world. What made you buy those shoes and put them on your feet? Well, these boots were made for walking. You know, that's what I do. So. They're trying so hard to egg him on for content, and he just doesn't care. What? This is what you do for content? You just. Go up and ask, so like, like, if you could change those shoes right now, what would you change them into? I just, why is your energy not there? My homie is about to come out, <laughs> and we're about to go. This goes on for minutes. No, no, but I'm saying, why are you acting like it's not interesting? What? <laughs> but since when is, like, basically bullying content? That's what they're, they're trying to bully people. They're going up and, like racking down on what they're wearing or what they're doing in public and trying to get a reaction and then uploading it. This is like when bullies in high school peaked and they're trying to turn their bullying into their own personality and brand, but make content of it. Well, it does. It, maybe it works until you bump into people like this who just don't care. <laughs> he just doesn't care! That's so beautiful, man! You know the thing that I cannot believe is that the people filming actually uploaded this. Because, you know, this is from their POV, so they actually uploaded this. This isn't, like, a standard buy or something. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's not talking. You wanna talk? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I must say, though, I'm a bit jealous of the dude on the right. The guy they're trying to interview, right? I believe that if you have managed to re reach this point of, like, <laughs> internal... This dude zen, at the table over there say, if we did like that, the enemy slapped out of us. <laughs> Let's give him a try.
<laughs> okay, anyway, that's, that's incoherent. So anyway, I, I love that. I'm kind of jealous of his inner zen, because I believe when you reach this point of just peacefulness, when you don't let people bother you in the least, you have achieved a level of existence where I think you are just happier. Bullshit just washes off you. It is beautiful. Man, what an aspiration. This is how I need to be about, like, hate comments online. Just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should use this video as educational material for creators. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. That is so true, or at least discomfort. Fear is a very strong word. Sometimes you can be genuinely worried. Sometimes it can be anxiety, or sometimes it can be discomfort. But most of the things in life that will end up meaning a lot to you are on the other side of something that is uncomfortable. For example, asking someone out that you really like, taking a risk with the workplace, trying something new or a hobby, trying something that you suck at and will be uncomfortable at first, but then you make new friends and have new experience and you grow as a person. So being uncomfortable sometimes is, is a very valuable thing. I've always really enjoyed living life, like having one foot in very stable things and things I know, you know, stuff I know is going to be reliable and most likely not going to change very fast. And then having one foot in like the more chaotic things where it's like, oh, trying new stuff and doing things that make me uncomfortable or things that are that are difficult. And I think that's a good way of living your life because it makes you feel stable enough to not be completely stressed out, but it doesn't let you stagnate and be just bored either. To quote Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 3, Line 87. No. Can someone tell me how to not give a frick about this? My parents in their 30s. Let's buy a house. Me in my 30s. Haha, <laughs> the ocean is on fire again. Studying history helped me a lot. I used to think that I now live in terrible times in which only bad things happen. But after studying history, I realized that terrible times with a lot of bad things are the usual state of the planet from the very moment of its inception. So in general, nothing unusual is happening. We move on with our lives. Yeah, and a lot of things have gotten better, but you don't notice it because it gets better so slowly. It's way easier for the human mind to suck up information that is very intense right now. For example, horrible events that is happening this moment moment. But you don't really pay attention to like, for example, child mortality rates, which have drastically decreased, but it's over the last 30 years. Slow moving stuff doesn't have the same splash either in media or just psychologically for us humans. So sometimes just zooming out on these things and realizing that some stuff in the world is actually getting better is very important. But good book that I keep recommending in my videos is Factfulness. It's a very good book that talks about uh, this issue, but also among other things. Uh, it's a very good read because it's kind of like a optimist, realist way of seeing the world. And I really like that attitude. Don't think too much. You will create a problem that wasn't even there in the first place. But maybe that's how I practice my problem solution. Hmm? That's that's gonna be on my resume. I deal with problems every single day. Oh, what problems do you deal with, dear potential recruitee? Oh my god, it's my made-up bullshit in the shower. <laughs> and I'm really good at arguing my point. Well, laddies, lasses, and lassos, I do hope you enjoy this video and it makes you feel a bit less giving frickily about the worldly, because you deserve to not give a frick about everything all the time, except plushies. Of course, everyone should care about plushies all the time. Get them now so you can do this. Woo! Woo! Absolutely gorgeous. Have an amazing rest of your day, but I will see you in the very near future, and take care. Mwah.